everybody, welcome back. It is Chipo time again. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at the MK168 transistor tester. Now this was one really cheap unit. I got this off of Amazon and I paid, are you getting, are you ready for this? Sit down everybody. 12 bucks Canadian, 12 bucks Canadian, about $10 US for this puppy. That is insane. What an amazing price for a component tester. Now, normally this should be shipping with some crocodile leads, a yellow, green and red, but uh, for whatever reason, I didn't get them. In fact, I didn't get much with this. Uh, came in a bubble plastic wrap. That's it, no box, no leads, no manual instructions, nada. But thank heavens, I did get the Ziff socket. So that's really all we need. So if you like blue, you're definitely gonna like the MK168. It's got that nice sky blue going on. Um, pretty decent in terms of overall build quality. This is a solid plastic enclosure. Uh, nothing fancy, but it is robust, and I guess that's what matters. We have really nothing on the back as well telling us uh, anything about this unit. That just simply goes on like so. Put your components in and put the lever down. Now, sometimes these levers do come out like that. It's no big deal. It's a simple matter of just putting back in and you are good to go. By the way, you can lock it in both directions as well, left or right, doesn't really matter, but yeah. Now, one thing I do like on this unit, and I'm telling you, this is an old unit. These things have been around forever, probably at least eight years uh, in the electronic testing genre. So uh, nothing new per se. Yes, there's newer firmware, new chips. This is a new unit, but in general, they've been around for a long, long time. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's tried and true. It's proven. And honestly, um, that's a good thing. Also, one thing I do like is that display. Look at that. That is crisp. Nothing fancy schmancy, but it is a nice, clear, crisp LCD display. And that amber color is very easy on the eyes. It doesn't matter what sort of lighting conditions you have. You're definitely going to be able to see what you're looking at. As well, we have that one test button here. The illuminated LED just tells us we're in testing mode. But that's it. Nothing else going on with this. Really simple. And you know what? Simple is good. Now this particular unit is powered right now by a 9 volt battery. But as you can see here, we do have a connector as well for a, an external adapter, which is really handy. Um, if you look at the B-Side ESR02 Pro, uh, right now I have it plugged into that AC adapter as well. And if we turn it on, look at the difference in the display. I mean, Honestly, like night and day, I really, really prefer the MK168. Uh, just so much nicer, so much brighter and verbose. Oh, I love it. I love it. We're going to test a few components today. We're not going to go crazy. Just give you a quick one see of how they look. Uh, here I've got a polyester capacitor, standard resistor, LED, um, a coil inductor, and finally an electric lytic capacitor. So that should give us a good general indication of how good this thing I'm is. I'm going to compare it against the x 380193 LCR meter. Uh, much more expensive, really, you can buy. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, probably about 35, 40 of these units for one of those. Okay, let's get started here. We're gonna start off with this little polyester capacitor. I believe this is like 49 nanofarad. Now we're gonna open up that Ziff socket and insert it like so, close it. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that test button. And it's starting up and 49. 0 0.20 nanofarad. Now we don't have a hold feature, anything fancy, but uh, hey, that's okay. 49 nanofarad is what we're getting. Now we'll compare that to the x -Tech. And there we go. 51 nanofarad for the x -Tech. So all in all, pretty darn close. Good stuff. Now these testers, boy, they are called everything. They're called transistor testers, multifunction testers, component testers. It's all the same thing. Personally, I like to call it a component tester because it just tests everything, not just transistors. In fact, who tests transistors anymore? Come on. So we're looking at the standard resistor right now and let's start it up. It takes a couple of seconds to boot and initialize, but 510.9K, and I believe, yes, this is a 511K precision resistor. So that is pretty darn close. Now, once again, we'll put that on the x deck and we'll see what the 380193 has to say. 
and pretty close 509.8 kilo ohms so yeah that is nice 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 all right next up oh let's try that coil inductor doesn't really matter per se where you put the component on that ZIF socket. What matters most is that it's in there nice and snug so when you turn the lever it is definitely not going anywhere. So nice and snug. Okay here we go. Coil inductor. I believe this is around 8 millihenry. We shall soon find out. 9.77 millihenry and uh, okay. Well, let's compare that now with the x -Tech. I wish it had a hold. I wish it had a hold. That would have been, you know, just take it up a notch, but it doesn't. That's okay. 9.77. I'm going to try and use the plates. Is that going to work? You know what? I'm going to use the leads. 9.77 is what the MK168 gave us. And we are now in inductance mode. So a little bit higher, 11.3 millihenries on the x -Tech. Hmm, interesting. I already decided okay. to bring in a third opinion with the little B side. And as you can see, or did see, coming up as 9.07 millihenries. So closer to the MK168 in terms of the um, actual reading. So um, yeah interesting that X-Tex doesn't seem to be quite as good with that coil inductor. Next up we've got a red LED and hit that test button and it does not give us a reading so I'm not in the correct socket so we're gonna try this again. And we just saw it flash. It's flashing now. So the UF is the actual forward voltage drop. 1.89 volts and the uh, reverse capacitance is coming up as seven picofarad nice and fast and by uh, that illumination we know that this led is indeed good so 1.89 volts forward voltage drop let's compare that brought back mr b side 1.9 volts is the forward voltage drop uh six uh, microfarad a uh, picofarad rather for the reverse capacitance so yeah pretty close to the mk168 and of course the LCR meter the 380193 is unable to read a diode so wow look at that 300 bucks can't even read a bloody LED oh that's a big win for 168 by the way um if you can do certainly use the ZIF socket as opposed to those uh crocodile test leads because you know whenever you introduce a third party um you're gonna get some stray capacitance or a stray reading what have you so here you're basically cutting out the middleman always better more accurate to use that zip socket okay we've got a standard electrolytic right now uh that is a 10 volt 3300 microfarad and let's see what we have 3300 microfarad is what we want 3.3 millifarad and look at that wow that's pretty fast too 3288 3, microfarad 3.288 millifarad with an ESR value of 0.18 ohm and you know what is really sweet yes we get ESR excellent once again the x -Tech expensive LCR meter is unable to give me an ESR value so for little money peanuts we're getting the ESR so in the world of electronics a low ESR value is definitely going to be better than a component with a higher ESR all right, well, that's it for the component testing. Let's have a quick tear down and see what's on the inside. Here we are on the inside of the MK168. And right away, what do you notice? What do you notice? Yeah, one of these damn wires just came on. Done. All right, well, that's okay. I can touch that up later. Um, here we have our 9-volt header. That's for the battery, of course. You can see the DC 9-volt connector is right here. Uh, we do have a couple of those jumpers for connecting both the power button as well as those uh, banana jacks, which I will have to repair. And there is our nice big plain verbose LCD display. And it gets on there as a daughter board, really. It seems to be, yeah, it's plugged directly in to the main PCB. You know, this is a simple design, not a lot going on here. We're talking basically one chip is doing all the work. 
Underneath you can see that zebra strip as well, feeding the display. Here we have a 16 pin adapter that just connects to that uh, power receptacle if you want to plug it in instead of using the batteries. But uh, honestly, that 9 volt battery is gonna last a long, long time. So mm, I don't know how useful that can be, but you know what? It's there, it's nice to have. And if we flip it around, you can see we have two ICs, U2 and U1. Those are the chips that are doing all the work. But wow, what a simple, basic design. And I like how they've actually standed off that, um, standard, is that even a word? How they've um, braced that display with these metal um, grommets. So this thing is not going anywhere. Uh, nicely done. Not much else going on here. This is definitely kiss simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Well, you're not stupid. I have to say too, the quality of the PCB is really nice. It's a thick gauge PCB, not, nothing thin. This is pretty heavy considering it's just the display. And finally, the main PCB as well. You know, little touches like this. Look at those nice rivets for the uh, screwed assembly for the uh, display housing. Nicely done. All in all, clean, pristine. That's my fault, so just negate that out of the equation. Looking really, really good. Now, I don't know if this is the actual date of manufacture, but it does say 2015 024, so it's possible that uh, you have the sports probably four to five years old. But uh, once again, you know, uh, this has been around a long, long time, and uh, I just don't see it going out of style anytime soon. Okay, gonna put it all back together. There's a bevy of component time. testers on the market these days. Oh my gosh! Uh, TC1s, LCRT4s, M328s, uh, ESR02s, the list goes on and on. That being said, it's pretty hard to find better bang for buck than the venerable MK168. This little tester, despite saying transistor tester, this is a major component tester that pretty well does it all. And at a fraction of what you're gonna pay for a standard LCR meter. MK168 is definitely something I always have in my toolbox because this is one super handy dandy little testing instrument to have on the bench or on If the those road. crocodile clips are something that are you really concerned about, just email your seller and make sure that they're gonna ship them with the unit. The MK168 transistor tester, incredible bang for the buck. And if you haven't got one, wow, go out and grab one. It is a super little instrument. The MK168 transistor tester, Component tester gets a solid 4.5 out of five stars. Yeah, this is one awesome, awesome little testing tool. Get one while you can. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. I know you guys are having the heat there in the Northwest. Wow, what is that? What is that all about? And here in Canada, in BC, they've broken at least two temperature records as far as I know. Insane, insane hot summer. Well, stay cool, guys. Stay safe. To the next one. Keep on testing.